I do want to start, though, uh, with uh, uh, sort of an aspect of the presidential race, which has been the Texas economy. As you know, the, the Texas miracle, some call it, has been a centerpiece of the governor's campaign thus far, and it will presumably be one going forward. I want to ask you about the health of the economy. You very kindly last Friday put up on your website an update about the health of the Texas economy, putting forward various statistics, various measures of the economic health of the state, and you pronounced the recession over in Texas. I thought that was very interesting. Can you talk about that, please? Well, uh, based on the general rule of what is a recession, it is so-called over. However, I was talking to uh, John Hallman yesterday, and he had just come from a two-day... Tell people who he is, please. Oh, John Hallman is the state's revenue estimator, and he's been in that position now for about uh, six or seven years. Yeah. He had just come from a two-day national conference of all state revenue estimators. And they had had some folks making a presentation on what it was Global Insight. Right. And Global Insight is a well-known uh, entity that prognosticates about the future. And Global Insight had said on the national level, again, this is not Texas specific, that they predicted a 40% likelihood of a double dip in the US. Now, national. Now, yes, national. Now back to Texas. Um, Texas has had sales tax increases, rises for the last 18 months. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, lost jobs for about 14 months, and the U.S. lost jobs for 25 months. Uh, we have regained about 90% of all jobs lost. We lost about 433,000 jobs. We've got about 400,000 back. And I think I'm off again, I'm on again, off again. Yeah. Um, and so there's room for some optimism. But with, with respect to what does the trajectory look like, yeah. I'd say it's slightly tilted up. It's not uh, V-shaped. It's not, wow, we're going to go up. Um, it is flat plus. I mean, sort of upward flat plus. Yeah. And so that's making some people a little bit anxious. I travel around a lot and I talk to people about what do you want to do when you start hiring people? What right. do you, what's your move? Well, I talked to a guy in Midland, and Midland is rocking and rolling. Midland right. oil and gas is just going gangbusters, and he has a series of restaurants. And he said that he has 150 employees and he has no desire to open another restaurant because he's extremely concerned about what's going to happen with health care costs. And that's a major driver for him. Mm -hmm. And so although he's in a red hot place, um, he's pretty antsy. And still, still not entirely confident about the future. He's very, well, Evan, there's nobody that I've talked to in yeah. business that right. has any sense of confidence about what the health care plan is going to do. They just took class out. Right. They just took class out, so they don't know. And he's very concerned about that. And he said, why would I hire somebody? Right, well, well, let me come back to the Texas economy specifically, because, again, pronouncing the recession over is not the same as saying that everything is great and rosy and we should have a lot of confidence. But I'm trying, again, to gauge the health of the economy as we look forward, because the, many of the measures that you indicated, housing and all sort of other things, were all on the upward track. W one that I was interested in that was not up, and you've alluded to this, is, is employment. Um, mm -hmm. You indicated on that report on Friday that unemployment in Texas is not only up year over year, but if you go back the last couple months, it went from 8.2 to 8.4, 8.4 to 8.5. We're not yet in the first full month where the cuts that resulted from the legislative session's budget cutting have taken effect. And in fact, there's a story in the Fort Worth Star-Telegram today in which Ray Perryman is expressing some concern that we may see the fortunes that rose on the strength of the Texas economy now decline where the public sector job growth may, may, be, may be reversed and we may actually see our unemployment rate creep up even more. Nationally, we're at 9.1 percent. We're not very far away from where we are nationally. And you know, you hear in the presidential campaign that the unemployment rate is, is reason number one why we need to change presidents. My, my question is, if 9.1 percent is so bad nationally, why should we not be really, really concerned about 8.5 percent or the prospect of more here? Well, I would say certainly 8.5 is not a good number, but let me ally that with uh, foreclosure numbers because that's another uh, indicator in the economy. The Texas economy has about one out of 958, is the recent number, right. of houses getting foreclosures. If you're in Nevada, it's about one out of 114. So people, um, we are at about 8.5 percent, but it's, it's very varied. For example, if you are in Midland, the unemployment rate's at about 4.5 or 5 percent. If you're in McAllen, it's about 13 percent. If you're in Austin, it's about 7.5 percent. 
um, what I see, at least, from the perspective of what are the growth sectors, I would say that the oil and gas sector is very robust, right. and I want to I want to mention a headwind against that for in a second. But the oil and gas sector is very robust, and with respect to public sector employment, there was a lot of conversation during the legislative session about how many jobs will be lost in teaching, et cetera. And there's a lot of conversation, and at least based on some preliminary stuff that I have been told, um, that those very unpleasant, dire predictions have not come to fruition, that in some cases they're in fact not having to let people go.